In this video, we will be looking at how Barnes & Noble not just survived for 130 plus years but has become the largest national bookstore chain in the United States. If you love business strategies and would like to know how Barnes & Noble planted itself in the market and retain its relevance for more than 100 years, kindly stick to the end. Now, let's get right into the video. For those who do not know, Barnes & Noble is a leading retailer of content, digital media, and educational products as well as the largest retail bookseller in the world. Over 600 Barnes & Noble stores are owned and operated by the company, which also owns and operates BN.com, one of the best online stores. Through its multi-channel distribution platform, it gives customers easy and convenient access to books, magazines, newspapers, and other content. Today, Barnes & Noble is the largest national bookstore chain in the United States. The headquarters of the company is located in New York City. So, how did Barnes & Noble start? Barnes & Noble was founded in 1886 as Arthur Heinz & Company, a New York City bookstore at Four Cooper Institute in the Cooper Union Building. Gilbert Clifford Noble, a recently graduated Harvard student from Westfield, Massachusetts, was hired as a clerk there in the fall of 1886. Noble was made a partner in the business in 1894, and the name of the business was changed to Heinz & Noble. Noble purchased Heinz outright in 1917 and formed a partnership with William Barnes, the son of his longtime friend Charles Barnes. Soon after, the store's name was changed to Barnes & Noble. In 1873, Charles established the C.M. Barnes Wilcox Company, a book printing business in Wheaton, Illinois. However, William Barnes gave up his ownership stake in his father's business shortly before forming a partnership with Noble. John Wilcox Barnes, the son of William Barnes, bought Noble's stake in the business in 1930. At the age of 72, Noble passed away on June 6, 1936. The bookstore moved its flagship location to 18th Street and 5th Avenue in 1932, during the height of the Great Depression. This location remained the flagship of the business until it was closed in 2014. A related publishing company remained in the Noble family's ownership, and Barnes & Noble established a new publishing division in 1931. The store underwent a significant renovation the following year, and it was one of the first businesses to offer Muzak in 1940. In that decade, the business opened locations in Chicago and Brooklyn. John Wilcox Barnes, William Barnes' son, took full control after his death in 1945, when he was 78 years old. Between the 1950s and the 1960s, the business experienced significant growth. After John Barnes's death in 1964, the business was sold to the Amtel conglomerate two years later. Leonard Reggio, who is credited as one of the founders, then paid $1.2 million for the business in 1971. By that time, it had been mismanaged and only had one retail location and a significantly smaller wholesale operation. Amtel separately sold the publishing business to Harper & Row. By selling the New York Times bestsellers at 40% off the publisher's list price, Barnes & Noble became the first bookstore chain in the United States to advertise on television in 1974. A year later, the company also became the first bookseller to discount books. Throughout the 1980s, Barnes & Noble continued to grow, and in 1986, it bought Dayton Hudson's B. Dalton chain, which primarily operated out of shopping malls, for between $275 million and $300 million. By the end of the fiscal year, 1999, the company was the second-largest online bookseller in the United States thanks to its acquisition of the 797 B. Dalton bookstores. In January 2010, the last B. Dalton stores closed their doors. Barnes & Noble acquired the 22-store bookstop chain in 1989. Barnes & Noble became a publicly traded company in September 1993 by issuing stock worth $77 million under the BKS ticker symbol on the New York Stock Exchange. Until August 2019, when Elliott Management bought all of the company's stock and took it private, the company remained on the stock exchange. Before launching its official website, Barnes & Noble sold books through mail-order catalogs. Although the company's website was not launched until May 1997, it initially began selling books online through an early videotech service called, Trintex, a joint venture between Sears and IBM. In 1999, BarnesandNoble.com went public. 
The company acquired Sparknotes.com, a leading website for study aids, in 2001, and Sterling Publishing, a business that had been in operation for more than half a century and possessed a substantial print library, in 2003. With its acquisition of FictionWise in 2009, the company entered the ebook market and introduced its Nook brand of e-reading devices, which offer an engaging, user-friendly, and immersive digital reading experience. In 2016, Barnes & Noble started opening new prototype stores in selected markets across the country. These stores have a modern design with books at the center, more food and drink options, and comfortable seating to make customers feel welcome. Barnes & Noble is still the most popular book retailer in the United States, serving over 600 communities across all 50 states. With so many events happening around the company, they had to put some organizational structure in place to be able to operate optimally. The business is organized into three distinct divisions, Nook, B&N College, and B&N Retail. The e-book store, digital newsstand, and sales of Nook devices and accessories to third-party distribution partners, as well as to B&N Retail and B&N College, comprise the Nook segment. The contract operator of bookstores on college and university campuses across the United States is the B&N College segment. In addition, it provides textbooks, new, used, rented, and digital, as well as course-related materials, emblematic apparel and gifts, trade books, computer products, Nook products and accessories, school and dorm supplies, convenience and cafe supplies, and other products. In 2015, Barnes & Noble Education became its own separate business after the college operations were spun off. The e-commerce website barnesandnoble.com as well as Sterling Publishing, the company's publishing division, are part of the B&N retail segment. The primary brand under which this segment conducts business is Barnes & Noble Booksellers. It also provides a calendar of ongoing events, such as appearances by authors and activities for children. Like other businesses, the company made some resounding decisions, investments and partnerships. The publishing division of B&N got its start by reissuing inexpensive copies of out-of-print books. In 2003, the company made an effort to expand the division. The following year, the business experienced success. The New York Times bestseller list for its book, Hippie, was reached in September 2004. It frequently publishes and sells books at a price that is lower than that of its rivals. Over the course of its history, the company has acquired a number of businesses, including Sparknotes, an educational website and publishing company, in 2001, Sterling Publishing in 2003, and J.B. Fairfax International in 1999. Barnes & Noble agreed to offer Starbucks coffee in all of its current and planned cafes in 1993. Using SBC Freedom Link, which is now the AT&T Wi-Fi network, Barnes & Noble began offering Wi-Fi in the cafe area of selected stores in 2004. As of 2006, all stores offered Wi-Fi and by 2009, all customers were able to use Wi-Fi for free. In 2016, Barnes & Noble said it would open four concept stores in 2017. These stores would have cafes twice as big as its usual food spots and bars that served wine and beer. There would also be a waitstaff and a full breakfast, lunch, and dinner menu in restaurants. Sales growth was anticipated to resume at the restaurants. If sales surpassed expectations, executives of the company planned to open additional concept stores. Scarsdale New York and Edina, were among the first stores opened. Microsoft made an investment of $300 million on April 30, 2012, purchasing a 17.6% stake in Nook which was valued at approximately $1.7 billion. By repurchasing its stake, BNN announced in December 2014 that it had ended its partnership with Microsoft regarding the Nook. Although BNN had previously announced in June 2014 that it would spin off its Nook digital division into a separate publicly traded company, Nook remains a part of the company as of 2016. In the same month, the bookseller moved forward with plans to revamp its digital business and announced a partnership with Samsung Electronics to produce Nook tablets. The Nook 10 Inches HD, a new 10-inch Android-based tablet produced by Lenovo, would be available in 2021, according to the partnership announcement made by the company. The tablet is correctly available for purchase. So now, let us get to that area most of us are waiting for. 
The strategy. Kindly pay attention to the steps Barnes & Noble took to conquer, as these can be beneficial to your own business. The largest book retailer in the United States, Barnes & Noble, was defying the odds. It developed a credible growth strategy in the midst of turmoil, despite the fact that Borders, its largest traditional rival, had just filed for bankruptcy. Book sales across the entire industry were down 2.5% in the first quarter of 2011 compared to the same period in 2010. While the number of printed books was declining, the number of e-books was on the rise, growing by nearly 150% annually and BNN was bravely entering this future. With its Nook readers, BNN accepted the inevitable rather than fighting the e-book trend as it is the only legacy retailer that makes its own devices. Instead of offering a single reader as a defensive measure, it took the initiative with a family of frequently updated products that are prominently promoted in store. The company's ebook market share increased to 26% as a result of its expansion into the reader market. BNN has been at the forefront of the bookselling industry for a long time. It was one of the first to discount bestsellers, publish its own books, provide authors with options for self publishing establish superstores, and include coffee shops in its locations. In recent times, it has been successful in selling games and toys. The company has also made a few mistakes, like buying B. Dalton, a mall-based bookstore chain whose stores are now closed. But, for a business that has been around for centuries, it is quick to try out new strategies and make changes to its methods after carefully listening to how the market reacts. Additionally, the Nook Color from BNN is a reading device with less ambitious goals, but it stands out for its handling of glossy magazines and children's books. The device's functionality, design, and marketing all clearly target reading loving women. The black and white model, which is more basic, has been praised for its size, weight, and easy operation. BNN has made a brave bet on customers who love reading but have been underserved by its giant rival by carefully choosing its shots. Even though Barnes & Noble has chosen a sensible target audience of regular readers, it does not pretend to know how exactly their habits will change. Also, the fact that Barnes & Noble is the largest bookseller in the United States with the most retail locations and a dominant position in the media industry are some of its biggest selling points. Alright, for us not to make this video so long, let us just try to round up by looking at the performance indicators of the company. Here are the key financials of Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble generated a revenue of $3.5 billion in the 2019 fiscal year which was a 3% decrease from the previous year. It had a net income of about $3.8 million in 2019 from a net loss of $125.4 million in the previous year. In 2019, its total assets amounted to about $1.7 billion. The company had a total equity of $444.5 million in 2019. As of 2019, BNN had a total of 24,000 employees. What do you think of these numbers? Do you think that Barnes & Noble is doing well enough considering the fact that it has been in business for more than 130 years? If you think there is room for improvement, what do you think they should do better? Kindly share your thoughts in the comments section below. To check out any of their products or services, kindly use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you got value from this video, kindly share this video with people it may interest in your network. Also smash the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification so you will know as soon as we post new content.